Aloha, and it is Aloha Friday. This is the Art of Life. We broadcast live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. I'm your host, Willow Chang Alion, and it is a delight and honor, as always, to have a new guest to celebrate and introduce you to. Today we have an educator and a musician, as many people wear many hats. We have Daniel Patrick <laughs> McLaughlin, a man of three names and many hats. Welcome to the show. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me. You know, so let it be known, we met via social media, and I've also met your delightful wife, but you are a fellow musician here in Hawaii, and I thought we'd find out a little bit about your journey of how you got into music, and also how um, teaching um, influences your creative process. So tell us a little bit <laughs> about yourself. Okay, well, um, I'm a little bit, uh, or my background's a little bit unusual. Mm -hmm. um, I can always say I was conceived in Karachi, and wow. born in D.C., and I have three mothers, the one who bore me, the one who adopted me, and then I have a stepmother. Um, and all through that, I was sort of a little bit of a military brat and traveled around quite a bit. And we w were going through the late 60s or so, and my brother, uh, Mickey, he was deeply into Bob Dylan and drugs. And <laughs> my dad, my, I love my dad dearly, but he, he went through a phase in which he banned rock and roll from the house. Kind of like Footloose, but yeah. music. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's something like that. Um, basically because he didn't want me to end up like my brother. You know? so, um, so I love how parents assume that all their kids are going to be like each other. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, and in, in any case, though, it ended up happening. I'm, I had whatever remnants albums were there after my brother left. So I had uh, Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits. I had the Magical Mystery Tour, which is probably not the greatest Beatles album. You yeah, know. Really I had <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar, which was awesome. And uh, <laughs> uh, the theme to The Sting, which is all Scott Joplin rags. Right, right and also Simon and Garfunkel's uh, The Graduate soundtrack. Okay. That was it, yeah. that was it, and I loved it. Though. I mean, I, I really got into those albums. Um, but uh, I really, w my, my brother was sort of somewhat an idol, and he would never let me touch his guitar. You know, he was very, you know, he's like, maybe I'll show you, look, this is a D, Dan, this is a D, <laughs> you know. Later on, he became somewhat of a figure in New Orleans, and, well, actually, North Carolina and New Orleans. He developed the name. You can actually uh, YouTube him. Uh, Slewfoot is his wow. name, yeah. And he's a blues musician, well, primarily blues, but also some folk. And I actually, I would say that that was my first uh, actual gigs were playing with him in North Carolina. I had just learned a little, uh, if you know anything about positions on a guitar. I knew one blues box and I'd play that over with heart and feeling, you know, with, with my brother and, he, and he'd begrudgingly say, oh, yeah, you did okay with your noodling there. Man, <laughs> nice noodling. Um, and so subsequently, uh, I, I do want to plug my brother. He's, he's got three albums out uh, with Music Maker Relief Foundation. Uh, he did a lot to try to raise awareness for uh, blues musicians and stuff that were um, uh, needed help, uh, medical insurance and things like that. So anyway, so I moved into that and then uh, when I got up to uh, college, I went to college in Oregon and um, we, th that's when just all hell broke loose and I was just like into all these different things and different kinds of music and uh, for a while I, uh, I was in the same dorm with some, the uh, progenitor of Mud Honey. His name's uh, Mark, well, Mark Arm is his name uh, for Mud Honey, but Mark, anyway. And he was, he was like a true, you know, rock fanatic, but, but I would say sort of alternative, punk, grunge, and all that kind of stuff. And so I went through a period of time trying, I mean, I actually got my first acoustic guitar from my brother down in New Orleans, you know. And I knew my four chords, and I tried to create these enigmatic 
songs that no one could understand but me, you know. And and if I if I got into a mode where oh oh this is getting too literal, I gotta stop, you know. And it's I gotta make it so you know do a David Bowie thing where you cut it all up and so rearrange it. Ring. Yeah yeah. Right, right, right. And you go well. Let's make it so no one can understand it. But uh, anyway, and w after I graduated uh, with a BA in English, uh, I moved up to uh, Portland mm -hmm. to be uh, a waiter and musician for about 12 years. Nobody in Portland is a waiter or a musician. That's I, was, <laughs> I was just there oh. in April. Great town, Portland. Yeah. You, uh, you get all the love that you deserve. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Por Portland is one of my favorite places to go. You know, it's a, you talk about a well-planned city. That thing a is a well-planned city, very, and it's yeah. very user-friendly, and yeah. it's the power to the people. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So anyway, so I was, there, you know, I um, and it was there. I tried really hard to uh, get a band together, and that it's it's always been hard for me to get members together. They might be um, concerned that they'll look short next to you. <laughs> He's a That's very, true. very tall man, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. You can't, you can't tell that right now, the way we're si sitting right now. But. <laughs> I push my chair up a few notches to look a little taller. <laughs> right. Um, so I, I particularly remember uh, I put together a band called The Greening of Bohemia. And uh, I, I, this, this bass player, I don't, I don't even remember how I met this dude, but he turned out to be the strangest mix of, of issues. He was a an ex-hippie, Buddhist, yet racist bass player, you know. It was just the weirdest thing. And he said, I'm going to take you under my wing, you know. We're, you know and, but then it, it turned out that really it wasn't working out for a variety of reasons. Did you um, say it's not you, it's me? But what so do you do? I'm curious, yeah. when you want somebody to, like, make the exit, I know. do you make the exit or do you give them the boot? And if you do, what do you do? Are you talking about uh, bands or relationships? Yeah. Oh well, <laughs> no, bands well, uh, are relationships. Right? It, no, bands. exactly. Yeah, uh, the band is—it's like a relationship. It's really weird, and um, I think in in some cases, being uh, because I was the driving force behind that band, um, I just kind of like gave up, stopped making phone calls, and suddenly it's the fade away. The fade away. I've yeah. been in that in the band. Yeah. Like suddenly the communication ceases, but then there's like rehearsals going on on the right. set. Yeah. yeah, or you notice that band's guy's going with, he's rehearsing with that other band. What's the deal right. there? You open up the right. Honolulu Weekly and you see a listing for a band and you know the phone number. You're right. Like, hey, that's, that's yeah. That's our band. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. So, but during that time, I, w I was I lived in a in one of those. It was a very large mansion, but I had a little room in it with the bathroom down the hall. And I used to like turn up my guitar. I know it's, it's terrible. I was the worst neighbor ever, and I'm like getting feedback, doing all the stuff, you know. And a really cool guy named Stan Wood lived in this uh, place. He was an older guy, about maybe 10, maybe 20 years older than me, yeah. And he was like a secret agent. Uh, he was one of the coolest. So, yeah, I mean, he was, he was older, but he always had the cool haircut. He had really cool, he just looked elegant, you know? Mentor alert, yeah, mentor alert. Right, and what he did, he was uh, a free jazz improvisational guy. Mm -hmm. And what he improvised with, and I, I don't know, I, I'm not that great on it, but I thought I'd just show you. Um, he's, he would improvise with one of these, right? It would say, uh, strip of latex. Um, Hopefully unused. Right. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I've used them, but not in the way uh, some people might think. But, no. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I could demonstrate them later. Uh, I'm not that great with them. But um, for a anyway. moment, I thought it was a pasta noodle. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, it's a you know a tagliatella or something like that. Yeah. Um, but he uh, he knocked on my door and I thought he was going to complain. He goes, he goes, wow, you got some great vibrato. I'm like, oh, cool. And then we struck up this relationship. And then, so he was part of the, the one night the Greening of Bohemia played at the Satyricon Club. And he, we played a couple tunes together, you know, and then that's, we kind of took off and got into this sound thing. And all it was is just, I mean, completely uncommercial, you know, who could possibly like this kind of music? John Cage. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> maybe John Cage might yeah. like it. Meredith uh, Monk. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was just 
just out there and we started doing performances and it, you know it, again it, the, the idea was we would bring another improviser with us and then we'd rent out a theater and we'd do a performance and 14 to 20 people would come and we'd almost make the rent on the theater but <laughs> in I any don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about right so but it was a lot it, I was really getting into exploring music mm -hmm. and just uh, uh, experimenting with sounds and uh, and Stan Wood you know God bless him I mean he he died last year and uh, I was very happy to get to see him again though and, and um, just to you know shake his hand and he's he is also I want to say he's on YouTube as well if you look up Stan Wood and Vibra Band mm -hmm. V-I-B-R-A Band um, he has some really unique videos out there and, and there is Finally, he's got a good CD that's uh, that's available uh, on iTunes for dial download and stuff. We have we've created a couple of recordings, but unfortunately, the masters were lost. Um, I'm I'm going to talk with Pierre Greed about perhaps uh, we have a, a pretty good shape cassette. Maybe like I'd like to, ha to have it re-released just for the heck of it to be well, out Well, you have a title. It's going to be called The Lost Tapes. The Lost Tapes, right? yeah, yeah. I like the P.O. sessions. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I'm curious. You have this life of music. How did you get into teaching? Was that uh, a dual passion, or was that a pay-the-bills kind of thing, or were mom and dad saying, like, you need a regular job, son? Like, well, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of all of those. Yeah. Enough said. No, no. Um, and was, end of interview. <laughs> right. No, it was a... Uh, <coughs> Believe it or not, I had always wanted to be a teacher. Okay. Ever since I was little, I wanted to be a teacher. And then somehow it flew out the window when I wanted to be an avant-garde musician or something like that for a while. But I always had in the back of my head, I want to be a teacher. And, um, uh, you know, living this uh, waiter, musician lifestyle was, you know, it was ridiculous after a while. It was a little bit uh, pointlessly hedonistic and... At one point, I just said, "I gotta have to change." You know, I have this BA in English. Why don't I use it? And I, um, and part of it, yeah, uh, encouragement from parents saying, "Oh, well, yeah, get into something more secure." You just gave millions of parents hope who have uh, sons and daughters as waiters. They're like, "There's hope." <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, but you know, I loved, I did love waiting tables. I, um, but then it got to a point. It was a saturation level. Uh, uh, and so basically at that sort of nadir of my you know, existence, I decided, well, I, I've gone, you know, I've basically gone nowhere. So why don't I get a, uh, ESL certificate and go somewhere? That's so English as a second oh, language yeah. for the peeps out there. Yeah. I don't know if they use that anymore. I think now they go ELL, at least in the DOE, they call it ELL now. But anyway, whatever, it's teaching English as a second language. So I took this, uh, the Cambridge Royal Society of the Arts uh, certificate in teaching English. You know, it was not at Cambridge, but at a satellite school in Portland. And, <laughs> of course. And it was like a boot camp. I mean, I, I, it was really heavy because it was only a month, but it was eight hours a day. And you taught on the first day, which was, that was really scary. You no, know, this is what's scary. Yeah. Oh. You're going to hear part two about the Cambridge... Cambridge, Royal Society Royal, of the Alps. The Royal Society of whatever he said. I'm out of life. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Miley Scarpino, and I'm the host of the Empower Hour. If you're interested in health, nutrition, fitness, here on the island of Oahu, want to learn more about places to train at or different trainers available, then watch my show on Fridays at 3. We have a great time, and I hope that you'll come join us. Much aloha. Now go get swole. Aloha. I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right and what's good and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. 
Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. Aloha, it's the Art of Life. Hey, not everybody can just cut out and watch the Art of Life live, so you can always check us out. We're all about the archival process. Our back episodes are on YouTube. You can go to the Think Tech Hawaii channel. You can also go to the Art of Life with Willow Chang on Facebook. Click like. I do all the dirty work for you. All you have to do is scroll down and see all the little Easter eggs and goodies and updates about the guests and the shows that we have. So. If you are tuning in right now, let me tell you who we have as our guest. Mr. Daniel Patrick McLaughlin, Woo, long name, and uh, telling us about how he decided to go and get a teaching certificate oh, yeah. in English as a second language in the magical land of Portland. Portland, yes. So, yeah, I took this Cambridge certificate course. It was very difficult. Teaching on the first day. He's teaching on the first day. I mean, it was it was brutal. But then he got that certificate, and it's a desirable one. And I went to Japan and uh, got. And that at that point. Were you just, big in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> I I tell you what, I got I got sick of it to tell you the truth. No, I love I loved Japan for at least six months, six months, you know. And then I got really tired of it. But I was there for two years. Um, I just got tired of being squashed in trains and. The busy. I was up at five in the morning. I didn't come home till like eight, and I, I was. Did you have to go drink with your coworkers? I I did, and they're good. I'll tell you what, in Japan. Livers of iron. Yeah, <laughs> that, it, it's amazing. They don't need that enzyme because they have stamina in many other ways. Yeah, yeah, and and I've uh, I've ridden the apocalyptic train, last train last out train? of Tokyo. Which is, you have to catch it before midnight, because yeah. no trains run after midnight was news to me. Yeah. That's why all those wacky little hotels that you could stay Wacky in. hotels and uh, Mr. Donut, you can go there. And you go to, like, uh, Lawson, and they have all kinds of, like, you know, special toiletry kits, and you think, oh, wow, yeah. wonderful, and they have dress shirts and, you know, underwear, and you're like, wow, how... How nice yeah, to make these things cool. accessible, probably because you missed the train home. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and it was a, it was a couple of years of just total, busy. You know, it was very busy. I didn't really do any music so much there, and uh, and kind of like the dream had died for a while to do music. Uh, so dramatic. Right. Yeah. And then I came back um, when my father uh, passed away. I just felt like you know well. I came for the funeral and, you know, I was in beautiful Hawaii again. It was so different from being in the middle of industrial Japan. Uh, I mean, I lived in Ichikawa, but I went to all through Tokyo and, you know, Chiba and all that place. And it was just getting very, very gray and monotonous. Yeah. And then... Um, but the pachinko just didn't have oh the same God. feeling anymore. Oh, <laughs> man. You're no. like, I can get Calpico in Hawaii. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that Calpico. Got that. <laughs> yeah. So, but, what be, I mean, very quickly. And then I, I started working at a language school in, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, I met my first wife. We're going to skip over this part really quick. I met my first wife, then we got divorced, okay? And it was during that time. Can I make a sound? Yes. <laughs> These things happen. Right. <laughs> So, um, uh, during that time, I dusted off the old, mu you know, songs, right? And I had this one song in particular that I only had like a verse and part of the chorus. I used and to call it a stump. Yeah, yeah, a stump. That's it's good. Stump. Yeah. And and I looked at that and think, wow. And then I wrote it. I was like, whoa, that's one. And then I looked at some other fragments and I kind of finished them off. And then I started writing songs again and just. And then songs were sort of playing in my head. And there were some of them were about the breakup, but there were other just songs that were sort of almost like puzzles that needed to be solved. Mm -hmm. You know, like I had bits and pieces. How can I put this together? And um, that's when I started to uh, you know, try to play out again. Uh, I reunited with a uh, uh, Punahou 
buddy, uh, Joe Lohmeyer. He was a classmate of mine on Facebook, and he's an incredible cello player. And we got together and uh, started playing with his wife, Erica Schwarzkopf, who is a female comic of Hawaii. Um, and, but anyway, she played harmonica. And, we, and then, then I started trying to do the same thing, but with more normal music. In other words, I'd, I'd go to the... Normal music. <laughs> I'd go to uh, <laughs> Dragon Upstairs on a Wednesday and try to get people to play with me there. And it was amazing how hard it was to get people to just... Would you like to do a set of songs? Anyone on a stage? Can we, yeah, can I jam with it? It was, it was actually hard to get a steady stream of musicians. Um, I'm in, in no small part to the fact that there's pretty much no money. Uh, but Pretty much? Yeah. Let's just clarify that. There's no money in music in this town. Unless you're going to Japan. That's right. And you're playing Hawaiian music. And you're playing Hawaiian music, exactly. yeah. Yeah, which, yeah. A lot of people uh, think that I play Hawaiian music. They think I'm part Hawaiian, in fact. Or, Lie. Yeah. I'm actually, Maybe you can be like the head of the NCAA. N N Sorry. Oh. God. Sorry. You, We're trying to use some you're topical bring that humor up there. Now. Oh, my goodness. You know? That was crazy. Maybe you can get a scholarship or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. But, but then, um, so nothing was happening, and then I injured my back terribly, moving a bar table that I thought was not as heavy as it was, and I was like, ah. And I kind of fell out of playing. I just say, I'm not going to, because uh, one thing my brother said that was true is like, uh, uh, you know, uh, being a musician is also like being a furniture mover, you know. So after you do all your artistic stuff, now you got to put it all back in the van. That's why we all want a roadie for Christmas. That's right. Not a groupie. No, no. Roadies, Groupies are, are useless. Right. We want a roadie. Yeah, they absolutely. pack it up. They, you know, get your chords, and they, they set everything up for you and deal with your amp. And yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, maybe UA should have a roadie program with interns. <gasps> you know? How about that? Me gusta. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Right. And so, and, and the, the, okay, then the other thing that happened is, uh, I guess I have to admit to the audience that I am 50 years old. Uh, I'm 52 now, but when I turned 50, <laughs> I went through a major midlife crisis thing like everybody does. I mean, it's not really a crisis. You know, the Chinese character for crisis is the same for opportunity. Oh, yes. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> that can mean everything and nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, uh, I realized I had all these songs, and I never really professionally recorded them. I recorded them by myself, uh, and I'm. Th it, to me, it's very frustrating getting all the levels. I'm all tangled up in wires, I, and I just said, you know, I'm just going to pay to get a professional and, and do these songs right. And so um, I'm a f my wife was a friend of uh, Neva Rego, mm -hmm. who knows. Hey, Neva. We have to yeah. say hello. Hello, Neva. Hi, Neva. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she, and anyway, and she knows Pierre Grill. And I had heard of Pierre Grill before, so I said, I'm going to call up Pierre Grill. And, and uh, it, it was a pretty amazing experience. It, it's, it's quite. Uh, Unusual, you know, working with him. Part right of it is, yeah. Go ahead. This, there are many things to love about Pierre. <laughs> the number one thing is he tells you exactly what he's thinking, whether you want to hear it or not. Yeah, you know, that's true. That's true. Which is very, very rare in Hawaii. Yeah. Because most people will never tell you what they're thinking, and they'll say what they think he wants you to hear, and then, and then it's not what you really need to hear. Right. So right. that's a beautiful quality to have with Pierre. Well, and I think that's why some people get kind of rebuffed by by his frankness and, uh, you know, and, and one thing uh, a, f a friend of mine said, he said that, that worked with Pierre, this other guy who some people say is my, my twin, uh, Brian Von, Von Awesome, uh, Van Awesome, sorry. Uh, I thought he said Von Awesome. Well, that's like what that. his project was, the Von Awesome project, <laughs> right? Um, and he, he worked with Pierre and he says, listen, you've got to have an idea, your idea. And you got to bring it, you got to really be able to articulate your idea to Pierre, you know. And he'll tell you what he thinks, and you might disagree, uh, but, but in the end, he has an incredible ear. So you got to, so, you know, there was a few times I said, no, no, I want this, I, I, this is what I want. 
And he goes, you don't want that. That sounds like it's some kind of a caveman thing. I said, I said that's what I'm talking I'm going for the caveman thing. He's like, no, 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 let me just, you know, here, let me do this. And just listen to me, you know. And I listen to it, and I'm like, uh, I don't know. And I listen to the next week, and I'm like, wow, that's, maybe he's right. Yeah, I get it. You know, so he's usually right. And I love okay. that he like breaks Wait, out in spontaneous. Oh, yeah. He'll like bust out on the keyboard and he'll be like, how about this? And he like throws in like this fill and he starts singing along with it. And, That's yeah. right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like I'll have like some simple, you know, folk thing going on and he'll be doing these elaborate sort of e either classical or jazz yeah. kind of. Da, 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 da. Or he like pulls out a rain log out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> you know, that yeah. strange basket of like assortment of various instruments, yeah, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I never knew that I needed a maraca right there. And I, I have to say, I mean, this might be a weird thing to say, but uh, his house is the same house that my high school girlfriend used to live in. Um, Ooh, extra yeah, first, mana. first love. And it was weird going, I'm like, wait, oh my God, it is that house. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. Don't I, tell us any more details. No, no, no. We need to know. Yes. <laughs> so um, so you had your midlife crisis, you met with yeah. Pierre, you birthed yeah. this uh, project. Right. Yeah, and par part of it was uh, I was meeting some really gifted musicians, I felt. Um, uh, and two of, two of the main guys were through the DOE. I, I do work for the DOE uh, at did Roosevelt High School. Did you vote? Did you vote? I did vote. Oh, that whole thing. Ooh, <laughs> we man. won't go there. <laughs> yeah, but that was that was pretty crazy. But in any case, uh, yeah, I met, uh, I'm in special ed and uh, Dan Cutter, uh, I said, what was uh, a fellow working with some of the kids and we just kind of put some things together for the kids, you know, over the summer, just like, hey, let's play some beats and, and, you know, let the kids play with some percussion instruments and stuff like that. And I noticed this guy's got a real touch. He has a touch, hand drums, and then I said, he plays a trap set too. He's all self-taught, but he, his his rhythms are very uh, ambitious, mm. you know. That, you know, so uh, he's great. And then through him, I met this guy named uh, Matt Miller, Matthew Miller, who's a monster bass player, and he was the original bass player for Poi Dog Pondering. Oh, hello, yeah. Frank Oral. Next time you come to Hawaii, you better be in my show. You've already had an invite twice, <laughs> and now once on camera. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and they're both they're both in other bands, uh, but they're they're happy to donate their time because nobody really has enough gigs anyway. So, um, and I'm really happy that they're, you know, that they can donate their time to this project. And um, then, then it just became one of those things of adding on. You know, um, I I desperately wanted Joe Lohmeyer, but he couldn't make it except for one song. So we got him on a song, a cello. Um, Does he go by Joe Lowe, plays the cello? He, Sorry. <laughs> he should think about that. He that, should. You know, by the way, Joe, we're, you know, he needs to get out there and play more. Joe, you need to play out. You need to be a professional musician, okay? You just Dives called out. It. He gave yeah. you the finger wag. Yeah. So, uh, and then, so I started uh, Lisa Gomes uh, on, uh, uh, you know, violin. She's Irish person of the year. Um, she, but she is a family friend, and she she was on another song. Uh, there's an, another gifted string instrumentalist uh, named Diane Rubio, mm -hmm. and uh, from Falling Down Romance, and she, uh, you know, really augmented really nicely some of my slower one of my slower songs, and then I've got this guy um, who I, I did a, a gig at Rafters, and a couple I've done a few gigs at Rafters. And one was a tribute to my brother, Slewfoot, and it was a blues thing. And out of the blue, uh, there was uh, Louis uh, the Fish Dinolfo. I don't know if you know him. He's an incredible harmonica player. And so he's on one of my songs, too. So. Is he the one who likes to wear the top hats? I don't think he wears the top hat. OK. Yeah, you, you, Hawaii <laughs> has a few harmonica players, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Think about that. What's your special skill? Do you have a special name? Can't do slew foot, it's already taken. Think about it, we'll be right back. This is the Art of Life. This is Alice Jane Pagan, host of Think Tech Hawaii. This is Education Spotlight. My show here at Think Tech Hawaii is every Thursday from 3 to 4 in the afternoon. 
I bring in interesting guests from Hawaii, the mainland, and hopefully international guests in the future. Do join us on Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. ThinkTech Hawaii Business Education Spotlight. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island. I work in the ER there. But on Tuesday afternoons, I get to come and spend 45 minutes to an hour with Jay Fidel and the Think Tech staff. They're terrific professionals. They help us to bring some of the leading, cutting-edge topics here across our state to you. So you can join us at our show on healthcare in Hawaii to talk with leaders from across all the spectrum of health in our state. Or you can join us for any other show where we talk about economic development or tourism or some really eclectic programs, too. So really, we'd love to see you here on our show. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for supporting us. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborate and, and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. So one of the things that I implored our guests, I said, bring your axe. Yes, I said that. Bring your axe. Play for us. So the completion of this magical musical mystery tour is this little oh. baby. Yes. That's right. That's right. Mr. Mac, Shadow Box. Original tunes, all songs written by Dan McLaughlin, a.k.a. Mr. Mac. And here it is. This is your baby. It came out this That's year. Right, yes. I mean, it's and been spanking new. And uh, it was in March. I haven't really had a chance to promote it, though, because it was, school was so busy. And so, you know, kind of like regrouping and figuring out a way to, you know. Get it out there. It, yeah. Well, we'd love to hear something, whatever you feel inclined to share, even I'm, if it's snippets. I'm suddenly scared now. It's I don't okay. think I'm going to play it now, honestly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking about those fabulous guitars, carbon fiber, ladies and gentlemen. You may not be able to see that, but uh, it's oh. lightweight and it cleans up easy. Yeah, it's, it's the bat guitar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I took this to France. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to show you, like, uh, I here's a, a chord progression I totally ripped off from Lifehouse. Who probably ripped it off someone else, but... And that one, you can, like, put so many words into that, yeah? Like, tell, tell, Don't tell, tell me... Don't tell that to Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so tell me, what was your biggest frustration of the day today? My biggest frustration of the day? Um, people who need water that are not going to be that possibly may not be supplied water and they might have dehydration i know that's a strange topic oh but wow so yeah, yeah it's kind of specific okay so it's like give me some information how to prevent dehydration people need water people need to drink people need water and they need to UTIs are yeah. a bad thing. <laughs> Sorry. No, so yeah. uh, I kind of ruined my song there, but. Um, no, uh, you didn't. You embellished it. Um, you, you expanded it to a new audience. <laughs> <laughs> Nestle's on line one. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have a favorite song? Like. Do you like to start your set with a favorite song? Like, well, for anybody who comes to my shows, I'm going to start off Paper Moon. It's easy. It's the key of C. We can always kind of gauge if everyone's literally on the same page, and then we can proceed. <laughs> so, you know, like, yeah, it's kind of nice. Do you have a song that you like to start off well, with? Well, this is the song that I almost always started off with, and it was like the first song that I 
wrote, I'll just do a little bit of it. It's called Shadowbox. It's one of my more enigmatic songs when I was in my, you know, I am a conundrum phase. I like you know? that. That's a song right there. There is a special place on her wall called the shadow box. The passage of time means nothing at all to her shadow box. Shadows and memories vibrate her protoplasm. We can see her heave and sigh. As she sings jazz standards, she pets a charcoal satin cat. As she languidly gazes at the purple earrings, the mushroom cloud, the picture of Emily. I never guess you're an English major. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's god. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. I wonder if if your dad had not made music so contraband. Right. If you would have maybe followed through. I mean, obviously there was a huge journey and a process to get to this point. But right. Yeah. Do you think those roadblocks were things that by jumping over those hurdles it actually got you to your destination? Yeah, well, you can only think in that way, I think, yeah. in, in life. You know, you, you come upon uh, what you think of as a roadblock, and it, it, it somehow affects you in some way, mm -hmm. you know, that in, I, I would think in a positive way, hopefully. Um, I think it's because th then it just, I yearned so much more for music. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't know. I think uh, I just maybe had problems uh, just uh, with promoting myself or, or believing in myself, I think. Maybe if, I, I think I needed to believe in myself a little bit more uh, to get to this point, maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> let's say. But, you know. Kronos, man, it's all about the divine timing of things, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You so, wouldn't have met Pierre 20 years ago. No, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't be here, maybe. Yeah. I'd probably be on the mainland. Shutters. So, like, one of the things I, I remember when I was uh, younger, everybody hated country, you know? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm just being honest here. Uh, I was in a group of Led Zeppelin fanatics, and no uh, apologies you know. here, my friend. <laughs> right. But, Play me that lemon song. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and again, I was talking about you know not being so literal. But now, I guess to this point, I, I was going to say that now I'm just like, well, I'm writing songs. I don't care what they if they're silly songs, if they're dumb. I just just write them, you know, yeah. or if they're they're literal. And so uh, when I was in Japan, too, what I would listen to Armed Forces Radio, and listening to country actually was sort of comforting because you understood all the words, what they're saying, and you could imagine them driving in their pickup truck, coming home, and stuff yeah. like that. That's that sense of longing, the saudade, as the Portuguese say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I have a, there's a country song uh, called The Golden Afternoon on the album, and it's, it's, it's everything's country except I didn't do it in a country accent. Okay, no done. twang. Yeah. Okay, so it's, I'll just do a little of that. It's like... Been a long time since we had a nice long talk. Been a long time since we took a Sunday walk. Going to see the movies just you and me, there's a matinee playing at a quarter to three. Reading the coming attraction signs, sucking up cola through cherry red vines. We'll see the wrath of Godzilla, or maybe Charlie Brown. Nothing in this world is going to Bring us down Singing the olden tunes in the golden afternoon Nothing's gonna ruin our day Singing in the old saloons Making animals with red balloons 
Nothing's gonna ruin our day If everything's gonna be okay well, That's a little of that one. I like it. Yeah. It's yeah. like... Yeah. It's like a country version of Perfect Day. Yeah. Kind of like Lou Reed is. Such a perfect day. Yeah. No, you know, I can't I'm going to say this. this, and this is actually intended as compliment, because there is a, a sellability. People think of, a lot of times, artists are like, oh my God, commercial, that's like the kiss of death. No, that's a high compliment, because mm -hmm. if it's commercial, it means it's a commodity that people want. Mm -hmm. And I could totally hear that on the radio. Yeah, well, I, you know I, what I mean. I hope. <laughs> Hello, I Capital hope so. Records. Goodness yeah. gracious, call up this man. <laughs> Strike while the iron's hot. They're good. Yes. They're good to go. I'm ready to go. They're good to go. <laughs> call Please up. Please save me from the DOE. How about save me from the DOE? Wait, I've got an idea. We'll call up Red Vines and you'll <laughs> you'll use a Red Vines right there. Red Vines, and they could play it before they show the movies when they have those. Have you ever done that? Use that as a straw. That's a good I one. I haven't. Yeah, that's I a, might have to try it's, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, we're at that sad part of the show oh, where we're, I know, which wow. means we're going to have to have you for part two, seriously, oh. but I want our audience to know, how can they find out about your album, oh. and maybe there's some upcoming gigs or a website, oh. they can, you know, be their, your fans or stalkers or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to have fans. <laughs> He'd love to have <coughs> roadies. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Right now, uh, we're going to play at a, we're opening up for a band called Elephant at, on the 20th of June mm -hmm. uh, at the Irish Rose oh, from 7.30 to 8.30. So it's an early gig, so all of my teacher friends can come and see me. They have <laughs> no excuses. That's right. And uh, beyond that, we're going to play at, uh, in July uh, 18th, Saturday, at a, what we now have to call a secret private home in Kaimuki ah. that's near KCC uh, yeah. yeah you know what that I place what is? That is and it's technically a house party uh, okay well that's where we're gonna play um, and then to get a hold of me pretty easy website that we're still kind of working on so if you go there it's not quite all together it will never be done right. that's the nature of websites I'm letting you know now <laughs> Uh, it's got, it's just MrMac808.com. Pretty Mr. easy. Mac 808. Yeah. You might have to have a mac and cheese song. You know what I'm talking there about you go. here? Doing the craft stuff. Yeah. 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 I actually like that. Do you know that? I, and it's terrible. Craft mac and cheese. Your secret to take with me. They're taking out that weird dye so you don't have to feel so bad. But that's what made it so great. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. It's like no. me like the fluorescent food. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And what was I going to say? Oh, it's available on iTunes now. Um, so you got to go, you know, Mr. Mac, or, or Shadow Box by Mr. Mac. Uh, there's, a, there's a few Mr. Macs and there's a few Shadow Boxes, but not M Mr. Mac Shadow Box. And if you tune into uh, Mr. Mac and it's a guy with a bald head, with a much darker complexion, with gold chains, that's not me. Uh, Look for the guy in the hat. Okay. By the way, I brought my hat. This, now I they now visual aid. now I'm recognized as Mr. Mac. It's like the Clark Kent thing, yeah. right? You know, oh, who's that? Oh, it's Dan McLaughlin, right? It's like, oh wait, oh it's Mr. Mac. Mr. Mac. Wow. We're gonna have to have a Mr. Mac attack and have part two. <laughs> Thank you for spending Aloha Friday all with right. us. Thank you so much. And I wish you the best of luck in all of your musical endeavors, and also for teaching the keiki. You know, either of those things are the hard stuff in life, but bring so much joy. We will see everybody next week on The Art of Life. Keeping it Pono. Aloha.